Okay, guys, good morning. It's 9.30 and it's a Saturday morning and we are talking about the rentability review. Does your buy-to-let actually tick the right boxes for the right tenants? It's going to be an awesome show today. We've got Richard Coote, Lettons Director at Five Properties on and myself. Okay. We're going to be sharing secrets as usual, so hang on in there because you never know. Uh, I used to go to a lot, a lot of functions. I still do. But I tell you what, just at some moment when you think it's like, okay, we're just waiting and waiting and waiting, and then that penny drops, and you think, wow, that small bit of information has made a fundamental difference over the years to me from then on, because I just found that out. So years ago, here's one of the classics, as somebody said, why do you not stick a line in jar in the newspaper, flats and, flats and apartments or houses for cash? And that was 25 years ago, and people are just caught on to that just now on social media. That is the fundamental difference of knowing by experience and wisdom rather than trial and error. So, Richard, how are you this morning? Yeah, I'm really good. It's a beautiful morning today. But, yeah, just it's like you say, Jim, I mean, all the years of like training and, and courses and things that I've done as well, it's all the wee nuggets of information that you hold on to um, throughout, throughout your journey for learning and things as well. And, I think every day, every day is a school day. I mean, every day I learn new things as well, and it's it's taking away the you know get some information and using them every day. I'm I'm oh, learning new things every day still now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it's it's an ever evolving thing. There's one thing constant in this world, and it's change. Yeah, and I know that's a bit of a paradox, but it's true. It's change will always happen regardless, and you have to understand and anybody out there to be able to roll with the punches, so to speak. Yeah, no, that's not going to be punches, but <laughs> I think tem temperature change you know is really I mean. uh, temperature change, and and obviously go with it. Uh, some people are reluctant to, to with change and things, and uh, that could be a downfall. Um, it's something I had to adapt to a few years back, getting used to things changing so much, and obviously the lettings industry and things changes so much um, on a weekly basis. Getting <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Okay, so there's a book by Simon Sinek. Is that Sinek. right? Yep. Sinek. Simon Sinek, it's called yeah. Find Your Why. Um, and it's all about identifying the reason for having a business in the first place. I mean, why do you do what you do? That's really yeah. what it comes down to. The same question can be applied in your rental property. Um, why would a tenant choose your buy to let instead of another one? Why would you why would they pay you more rent? Why would they stay beyond their initial contract in the time that they were meant to stay? Asking yourself these questions helps you appreciate everything that's already great about your rental property and to seek out areas for improvement in the process. It's an integral part of owning a successful buy-to-let when, when, when it's empty, so this is when it's empty, and while it's even occupied as well. It's also why we carry out interim inspections and not just to identify repairs, but also to ensure that our landlords and letting uh, letting uh, letting portfolios keep up to date with the local market and ahead of government legislation. Um, most people, well, most people haven't even caught up with the fire regulations yet, have no, no. they? It's like I know oh, I'm amazed at how many properties I go into from you know other other landlords, and and then you look round and you think, okay, there's a smoke detector in the hall, there's a smoke detector upstairs. Uh, where's one in every reception room and where's your heat detector in the kitchen? And yeah. it's like they're no there. And I'm thinking, and they go, I am just going to get round to that. And I'm thinking, flip an egg. That was 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of landlords and things come come to me recently and checking that their property is compliant. And obviously, if we're already managing it, then the answer is yes. Because obviously, your, yeah. your ICR and your smoke alarms and things that were fitted um, are compliant with the new regulations that are, that are brought in February for normal residential properties. But um, obviously, it's good that people are checking with us, but um, you can be assured, obviously, if we're managing it, there's an EICR in place, it's already compliant. But uh, interim inspections and things, that's one of the main things we do, check all the smoke alarms are in place, check they're all working, check there's a carbon monoxide, um, and that's obviously just part of what we do. But There's a requirement you know, for a of registration, isn't there? They're getting, yeah. they're getting a wee bit uppity about the whole thing, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, um, about the fact that it should be um, run like that. So, um, you know, that's a classic example about 
what happens in between and what's happening behind the behind the scenes. And a lot of landlords actually don't know about this at all, or property investors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's take a look at um, uh, the review of your own buy to lets and what you would look at the, to keep them performing at their peak and uh, yeah. pulling in the crowds. Say a couple of good mornings. Uh, good morning, James. How are you? And good morning, morning Kev. How are you as well? Morning, Kev. Guys, if you're watching, say good morning, interact. At the end of the day, we love doing this, but we love audience interaction as well. Yeah. And the reason for that is because rather than actually get a hotel room and actually sit in there and do this and everybody have to congregate on a hotel and pay for coming to a hotel, you can listen to this information for free, but feedback is great for us. And the yeah. fact that we know you're there, we know you're listening, and we know we're doing the right things. So if you get and if you can hear us out there and you can you can see us and, and it's making sense to you, then give us that feedback to understand. If it's not making sense to you at all, then ask us to elaborate. We're more than happy to do that. Um, as well, Facebook user, thank you very much for coming on. Um, there will be a link in there for StreamYard in the top of the post, possibly, just to go into StreamYard and give us permission to see your profile, um, because it's nice for that and all. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Morning, Thanks Mark. very much for interacting with us. Um, and as well, um, James has actually said, final weekend to get another across the line. Well done, James. And another that new carpets later in the week. Perfect. Good. That's fantastic. Good, um Okay, uh, but but there's no is there no surprise there that James uh, James's buy to let business seems to be growing because he's plugged into the system. Yeah, yeah, James's buy to let um, portfolio has taken off really well, um, and you'll probably know that obviously if James is uh, appearing on the, the uh, show on the Monday, the Wealth Creation Show, and obviously Jim uh, James's input with you, Jim. Um, but yeah, like you say, interactions what we need because obviously it's yeah. just been yeah. you talking to each other on the screen <laughs> and obviously I'm quite happy to talk about it because <laughs> it when you think about it, repetition is the mother of all skill yeah. you know and the more you talk about it and the more you learn about it yourself and you talk to another person about it and bounce off them then yeah. then it makes absolute sense to you and the more it embeds into your mind and the more you know about it so when it happens again or or, or you need to think about it in the future you've got that instant answer at your fingertips you know right off the top of your head um, so you don't need to go and look for it. So it's extremely efficient to do it this way. So yes. it's for what we're doing just now, I kind of think it's a bit of a selfish way because we're actually teaching ourselves how we do. Because like you see, in. repetition and then it ingrains it in your, yourself as well. So the, the one the one I want to talk about just now, so um, for the people out there, is your target market actually clear? Um, now, so what do we mean by is your target market actually clear? Well, every business has an ideal customer. Um, but the most successful ones are the ones that correctly identify their perfect customers and their clients and make that real connection with them as well. Um, if you think about brands you have an affinity for, such as people for Apple, um, for technology, Tesco's for groceries, John Lewis for home furnishings, and there's almost certainly something that's specific that draws you to them. The lettings market is actually no different at all, and it's made up of several target audiences richard do you want to talk about these target audiences yeah i mean uh, target audiences you need to have that in mind i think when you've got when you're start setting out to look for a buy to let you think about what type of property you want what area it's going to be in and who you're going to target in terms of these uh, individuals or do you know what I mean? whether if, if it's uh, if it's a built up area and you're thinking maybe a, a single person a, a professional or maybe a professional couples um, yeah. or you're potentially looking at maybe sharers people who share there's i mean there's sharers without it being an hmo um mm -hmm. or are you looking at uh, three and four bedroom houses in a desirable residential area and maybe it's going to be a, and obviously your target audience there would be a family because it's close to schools and parks and, do you know what i mean and then like i say obviously if you're more a more cosmopolitan kind of area you're looking for the working professionals or, or not not always necessarily i mean you could be on a good commuter link where prices yeah. are better than and closer to the cities and things and that's ideal for professional couples um and then places like st andrews and things if if you're looking to target uh, students and things as well um and then there's corporate lets and things as well so there, there's all different niches there uh, and you need to kind of hone in and like this is who i'm going to this is who i'm going to target this property for and make that property uh, adaptable or adapt that property to suit that kind of um, target market. Now, can I just throw a spiral at the work team? Yeah, of course you can. You always, you always do. That's not how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked out to maximise the value of the property completely because I know that I know the audience is there for what I want it yeah. for anyway, regardless. You know, so I'll look at the numbers 
in order to maximize the rent against the purchase price, against the finance cost, against the occupancy rate, yeah. against the yield itself overall, um, and then against the overheads and combined with that as well. So that gives me the overall profile to come out with at least a net margin of 15% every single time. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then obviously, you know, capital growth, to be honest, capital growth will happen regardless. Uh, you know, it's natural. It's a natural thing. Well, look over the last 20 years, and five over the last 20 years, or across the UK, property prices have gone up 170%. Inflation's gone up, according to the Bank of England, 70%. So there's 100% made for the people that actually own property. Now, I'm not talking about the home you live in, because think about the home you live in. It's like for like. So it's yeah. like, hey, I've increased my value in my house by 50 grand. All right, okay, you're going to buy your next house. And use and all that money off. to put it down, isn't it? It's going to increase by the same price anyway. So it's 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 horses for courses. Yeah. It, it makes no difference anyway. So unless you hold an asset outside of your own your own house, that's the only way you'll multiply your income over a period of time. Mm -hmm. That's the only way it's going to work. But in general, if this is the type of profile you look for, there is there is these number of groups that you talked about, Richard. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I stay away from student lets. It's not my thing. Yeah, it's not something we like do well. involved in it. HMO is not my thing either yeah. because it's a skill skill in itself, and I'll leave it to the professionals at, at core in HMO. I mean, Paul Preston's a classic. He's the HMO guy. Yeah. You know, um, and for me, it's like I'm the straightforward, bust them in, bust them out, high margin, good returns, excellent returns, and good capital growth over long term, medium to long term. And that's what keeps it sustainable. Plus the fact is my properties tend to be at a price point where if there's an exit strategy, I can get out pretty well, you mm -hmm. know, because of that, because they're not huge amount of value, which in times of crisis, for example, well, you could be talking about now if it escalates any further, um, it's easy to get rid of them because there's a larger market for your type of property than there is for a property which is a higher value. Um, because if anything's bought specifically for a student let, you know yourself, it's like, well, it's only really available for a student let. And mm -hmm. what happens if the student intake goes down? What happens if something changes in terms of the, well, for example, look at England. You're all going to pay your tuition fees now. You're not going to get away with that. So it's a huge amount of difference as well. Uh, James actually jumps yeah. in and says about HMOs. Look at HMOs. They're going to suffer with the utility bills. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, but when you think about it, James, um, yeah, absolutely. Because when you think about it, James, um, that's getting passed. The utility bills get passed on to the landlord. So the landlord is actually going to have to go back and say, prices are going to have to go up, guys. Um, and whether that's going to be tolerable or not is going to be another question. But if you look at your buy to let, is it obvious that you're who you're looking to attract because of it? And are you in are you in step with the actual neighbourhood you're in as well? Um, schools get better or worse, transport connections develop, shops and businesses evolve, and are changing demographics. Look at Leavenmouth, for example, train yep. station going in. Classic example for a for a sub. Yes. And you could see the development in Leavenmouth with the very fact that the train station goes in and who appears? Starbucks and McDonald's. Yeah, they're no daft, are they? <laughs> they know exactly what they're doing, and they know exactly what they're doing before you know what they think they're doing, because they understand the demographics and they understand the trends and where it's going and how they can see it, and they keep an eye on that every time. They've got millions and millions of pounds they spend on marketing and profiling in order to understand the neighbourhoods that they're going to position themselves in. So it's easy to then say, okay, that makes absolute sense to them. It should make absolute sense to me. I don't need to spend million, millions and millions of pounds because I can see what they're doing. Same with Burger King and yeah. Cooper. And Cooper, yeah. And there's no surprise that there's about a thousand properties in Cooper um, earmarked to, to build at some point in time. There's about a yeah. jostle in between, but the reality is um, it's going to happen at some point. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's why they understand that demographic as well and they understand where that's going. So what I would suggest to people is take a, a moment to review the local market and does your does your student like have a more profitable future with uh, professional sharers? There's another classic example as well, isn't it? You know, can you actually take a property? Now, the market I deal in, sharers aren't a great option um, because I've tried it time and time again. It doesn't work. It gives a lot a more margin. Years, yeah, but... yeah, it gives a lot more margin. Because two sharers on a roundabout, what is it? Probably about 600 for a property, a two-bedroom mm -hmm. property, whereas a two-bedroom property would normally attract maybe 500. So you're getting yeah. 1,200 quid a year, but you've got the hassle of having two people on one property and having to accommodate with each other as well. So it's it's uh, despite the fact I've tried and tried it, 
it just doesn't work. It doesn't um, always work. I mean, sharers will they always get along, and if they don't, then it's like one wants to leave, and uh, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of pitfalls that come with. It. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to find a replacement that's going to get them with other one. Yeah, and uh, so on and so forth, and all the rest of it. So it's not a market I personally go for as a result. Um, I'm pretty straightforward. Um, by the way, boring pays well. <laughs> Just for That's anybody out there, and if you don't understand what I mean by that, you can get in touch with us, and I'll tell you exactly why boring yeah. pays well. Um, or, or could it be um, a family um, rental, and could be make a, or could it make a perfect HMO? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're unsure about how to fine tune that, you know, you've got Richard there as well. You can get in touch with yeah. Richard, and uh, and he'll give you some useful tips and help you get it right as well. Not one size doesn't fit all. We talk. I talked about this the other day about one size doesn't fit all. And when I did my consultation document back to the um, the first minister um, and the housing minister as well in terms of the new new deal for tenants, mm -hmm. um, and I did say one size doesn't fit all, and this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to formulate the whole process in terms of the market, and uh, I don't think that'll work. Um, let's let's talk about let's talk let's move on then. Okay, so yeah. what do you think the next thing is we need to talk about? I think obviously once if, if you're looking at uh, you've got your property and you're looking at where your target audience the thing is things are you need to take a step back and then look at the property and think about what do I need to do to the property mm -hmm. to get it to that level where it's going to attract the, this type of tenant. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think look at like you like you were saying earlier just to take a step back and think right why am I doing this and and what do I need to do um, and look at the internals of the property and and make sure you're going to get it to a level where you're going to attract attract a good tenant as well. And I think that's obviously right down to the, the finishes and things. Um, this goes into this goes into the uh, BRRR, which is buy, yeah. refurbish, rent, re yeah. re refinance, or whatever it is. Yeah. Now, James actually does this. Um, actually, James, good point. Can't go wrong with that at all. However, sometimes you can go wrong. I saw somebody the other day actually going on and boasting about the fact that they bought a property for twenty two thousand. Um, they've now spent seven thousand refurbishing it, and it's worth eighty thousand. Now they are one and one and a few between, and then they refinanced it and took seventy five percent out eighty thousand, so which mm -hmm. is sixty thousand almost. So you've taken sixty thousand, you bought for twenty two, you bought seven, you've got thirty in, you took another, th you've got thirty out in cash, so you've got cash back. But what happens when you come to exit? You've now got a sixty thousand mortgage you've got to pay off. But if you've got eighty thousand and you sell it and you'll get a capital gains on the gain, which is effectively about sixty thousand pounds, so you'll be higher rates. So you'll pay almost thirty percent of sixty thousand. You'll pay twenty grand. So you sell it for eighty. You pay twenty grand in capital gains. You've got sixty left in your hand. Uh, oh, you've paid off the mortgage. That's it. It's no worth anything. It's the only thing you're getting out of the now is actually just the just the money you're getting in rent. So if you're if you're doing a short term to medium term strategy, that is not the way you should be doing it um, because you've got a deferred capital gain there. That you're going to get you're going to get caught out with uh, and then if the market changes credit crunch comes along drops 20 percent in value you've still got to pay a 60 grand mortgage off and you've only got a 60 grand property for example so 60 grand still got to pay 20 grand off you are going to sell for 60 you're going to have a gain of 40 you're going to take a third of that which is around about 10 twelve thousand pound you've got 60 you've got 12 grand off of that because you've got capital gains you've got Forty to eight thousand left, and you've still got to pay off a sixty grand mortgage. <laughs> You're out of pocket. You've probably just confused you everybody. Can't them, but you can't I... exit at that point because then yeah. you've gone and spent the money on something else completely, completely different. So you've got to watch out for that problem with the deferred capital gains, especially if your strategy is not a huge long term strategy, or what I've got is what is to keep forever and pass on yeah. generational wealth. Yeah, I've had a few people recently that didn't quite grasp the concept of capital gains tax and things and it can be confusing so always make sure that you speak to the right people before you you're, you're cracking on and doing things like that because yeah. it can come back to bite you later on okay so we're looking at is anything looking tired you're absolutely right i mean this does come into this um you know it's it's i i the one thing i the one thing i see when i walk around other people's properties um when they go to let them is um oh I, I i gave it a quick paint and it's like you just see the the the, the scuff marks painted over the touch up marks yeah. Aye, the touch up marks are painted over and then over a period of about maybe a month they begin to appear because the opacity disappears and and it's obvious that that's all you've done yeah and it just looks tired 
um, you're actually possibly better given a full lick of paint again and making sure it's it's done right. Um, the classic example as well is the showers. You know, these are all yeah. things. It's all these minor things that you would look at yourself and you think to yourself, I, you know, I wouldn't want to live in that property, isn't it? No, I mean, showers and, and the seals around baths and just all these minor things that you might overlook when you're doing the grand scheme of the whole property. Um, but when tenants come into view, it's the first thing that they're noticing. Yeah. And like you yeah. say, when you walk in with a fresh pair of eyes to a property that's not your own, uh, and it's like what we do in, in inspections, when we walk into a property, it's like we notice all the wee things that the tenants just become accustomed to. Yeah. Um, and, and and likewise, when a property becomes empty, when you've been looking at it fully furnished and then you're looking at empty rooms, every, every wee floor kind of jumps out to you, especially if um, you're, the property is new to you and you're a fresh set, set of eyes. So. So let's ask the audience out there. Um, what's your what's your wee what's your wee, wee bugbear? What's your wee yeah. bugbear when you go around a rental property and you look at it and you think to yourself, is it things like the carpets are just no right? Is it the things like scuffs on the walls? Is it the maybe the seal on the bath isn't the right? Um, things like that. What's the thing that would get you the most as a if you were a tenant and you walked around a property and you looked at it and you thought, oh, that's disgusting. It's like, is it just a wee minor thing? So I'd, I'd be interested to hear what your comments are out there from anybody out there um, uh, as to what you think would put you off a rental property. And it could just be a minor thing. The great thing about this is it will all contribute to this and then we we'll give each other these ideas. Then we'll all learn we'll all look each other for them. as a result. We'll all care you know, for them as well. Yeah, we'll all know. Because I've always realised, uh, well, I only, got, I only realised with a slap on the head by Keith Cunningham, who's, uh, <laughs> who's rich dad, by the way, um, so Keith Cunningham's Rich Dad, that's who the book is all about, Rich Dad, Keith Cunningham. Uh, he gave him a slap on the head. He says, Jim, I'll prove to you that the decision of the group is better than the decision of the individual. And I went, there's no way anybody could be writer than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, he proved to me. He proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt, because then he took me through a survival mode game. And the, the decisions of the group in the survival mode were actually better than the decision of the individual. Because I was convinced that I knew everything and, and my decision was always right. Uh, but now I realise that's not the case um, on most occasions. And I should take stock of everybody else's answers and then take that into account. Yeah. So what's, what's your look, biggest bugbear, Richard? I was just going to say, my one is, uh, which I've always picked up on um, throughout the years doing like obviously exit inspections and things, or even just general inspections, is see the edges like where you've got the, um, the threshold of the door. The edge yeah. of the carpet being just slightly, even just slightly frayed. It's just, I think that's so off-putting and it makes the place look um, really untidy. And it's one of the first things you see if you're coming into a room, the threshold of the door. And if it's just, if it's not quite pinned down or it's frayed, I hate that. Um, and I think as well, like the general cleanliness of a carpet is really off-putting. Um, so let's, let's take a look at other people. So that's your one. Yeah. My one personally is the seal on the bath or the shower yeah. and the, the grout. It's it's disgusting. It's like, I don't know. It just tells you straight away when you walk into a bathroom. Your bathroom could be absolutely, absolutely beautiful. But if the seals on the ground just don't yeah. look the part, it's disgusting. Now, I actually did something recently with someone with that exact example. They were going to get their bathroom replaced for £7,000. And I said, there's Was no way. Blade? All that is is the grout and the 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 seal on the, the shower seal. itself i says all you need to do is get in somebody to replace that and clean that up and it'll be perfect and you know every single person that walked around that property thought that bathroom was absolutely beautiful once it was done yeah. saved them seven thousand pound in the process so let's like, take a couple of look, look at a couple of comments here james says general cleanliness i kind of disagree with that at no, all no. um facebook user i've got a funny feeling that's heather <laughs> do you think that's maybe heather H. Uh, scruffy yeah. and uncaring, and it puts us straight into the mind the landlord doesn't care. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, James actually says dirty ovens again. Um, so, a bugbear. Dirty ovens is a, <laughs> is a big one. But most people don't know that, do they, until they move in? No. Washing machine, the seal around the door. Yeah, or, or, the, or the tray that you open. Dishwasher so stinks. Yes. Dishwasher stinks when you open it. These are all different things. Um, I remember distinctly Sarah Bini um, from, you know, the Sarah Bini on Channel 4. Yeah. Um, I remember her saying, really and, things. and and the the penny drop for me was the fact that she said uh, to one of the people that were on the programme, says, if you don't love your house, no one else is going to love it either. That's yeah. really what it comes down to. 
and I, and I thought that's exactly right. That's why my property wasn't renting at that point in time because mm -hmm. I hadn't done it to the standard that I had thought myself. Now this was many years ago, but I've understood that from then on, and it's it's stuck with me that wee snippet um, of that information. Um, so it's if you don't love the property, no one else is going to love it either, and they yeah. they will tell that when when people view it. It, you just know you just don't take care of it at all. So it's a big, big difference in terms of what it is. Uh, I would, um, I would totally agree with that. And I think as an agent conducting viewings, if you're in a property, you think, "Oh, this is nice. This is finished well." You then obviously it, it, it resonates through you to the viewer when they come in, like, "Look at this. Look at that." And you take them round, and you're a lot more. I don't know. It just it resonates a lot better. You're a lot more enthusiastic. Handled on doors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. On I mean, doors. Uh, gardens, jet washing balconies, um, pathways, you know, just no weeded yeah. when you come at the curb appeal, when you come at the front door. A lot of people concentrate on the inside, don't they? But yeah. they fail to remember that the garden is important as well. Yeah, and I mean, it, you just, it just needs to be tidy and, like you say, weed-free and and looking presentable. You didn't want somebody yeah. turning up for a view and, and the grass is like the height of the fence and things like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that could be very off-putting. Okay, so next, then, we want to talk about does everything important work, then? Mm -hmm. uh, the tenant's first few hours and days in your property um, form the foundations for your relationship with them. Uh, little niggles uh, make big impressions, and moving into a property with a fiddly door lock or the heating doesn't work or simply is not a good way of starting things off. As um, for the, I mean, you really have to go around where we find tooth comb beforehand in order to yeah. establish that. And that's key in the beginning, just to make sure everything works. Even things like one of the burners on the cooker doesn't work, or yeah. the sparker doesn't work, and I've no bothered because I just gave them a box of matches. You know things like that, and it just tells you know you know what I mean. It just tells yeah. you straight away. It's like I'm not really that bothered about this property. Now mm -hmm. the property is your biggest, one of your biggest tax-free assets. Possibly yeah. it's maybe seventy to hundred to hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand pounds worth of property, and you're quibbling over whether you should replace the hub because the sparker doesn't work. But it makes an understandable statement to your tenant when they're in yeah. the property. In other words, if you don't care about this property, then I why should I? Yeah. Why should I? Why should I care about it if you don't care about it? And yet you want me to take care of it, but you won't care about it yourself. That's a, it's an important point, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, and there is a lot of these, and, it, and it's really minor niggling things um, that that are, that are over. If they're oversight, then when you've done the move in, well, we do the move in, and after I move in and walked around with people and showed them all the the workings of the property, and they're all they're always probably nine times out of ten they'll phone you. Oh, what about this? What about this? And 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 that's fine. But you need to um, you need to be prepared to obviously have all these wee niggles sorted before the tenant moves in. Because if they so, continue to phone you, then what's the checklist you would recommend that they, they talk about? What what are all the bullet points? Yeah, I mean, the first and foremost, we do obviously the walk around with the pro at the property with the tenants, and the first thing I always do is show them how to work the boiler, set the heating, do the fill and loop, and top up the pressure if they need to. Um, obviously, if the property is furnished and it's got white goods and things, make sure they know mm -hmm. how to use the washing machine. There's a dishwasher there, they know how to use that. Um, even, and I, I think people might think, but well, this is simple, but the oven, the oven and the hob, make sure they use that as well. Um, and then things like if you're in apartments or flats, the secure door entry system, yeah, that's a that's a, that's a big one as well, because if somebody's yeah. on a setting third floor, they're going to want their secure door entry system and phone to work, so make sure that mm -hmm. all works. And then I think a, a big one as well is uh, keys, locks and keys, and make sure they have enough keys um, for all the doors. And uh, if there's maybe a, a store, a storeroom that they've got access to, do they have a key for that? If there's an outbuilding, because these yeah. are all things that are going to pick up the phone and phone you for. And really, you could have already had this all in place. Um, and to make sure all the, the outlets and things work, uh, sockets, light switches, um, radiators are all heating up. Um, usually, I go in um, and have the heating on and run it through and make sure the radiators are heating up. They might need bled or, or do you know what I mean? To let some air out mm -hmm. to make sure they're heating up. Um, so there's a lot of things. And then like you say, back to the bathroom, the shower and the taps, the shower running through, um, is it heating up properly? Um, and then external checks as well, like is the gutters, are the gutters needing cleared? Have they got vegetation in them? Are they leaking? Um, and these are all things that you should have went round and checked whether you're yeah. the agent or the landlord yourself, pre-tenancy. 
because if you've not and they're an issue you can be sure that the phone will be picked up and and they'll be coming back to you and they and the tenant will think why was this not already checked yeah so for me that exact list you're talking about you produced yeah. on this post um, and yeah. so so yeah absolutely the boiler in the hot water the biggest thing with the boiler is always the pressure boiler's a big one. um it's it's just needs a wee leak in a radiator pipe because all systems are most of the systems now unless they're gravity fed are actually sealed systems so it's like a tire on a car yeah. so as soon as you let a wee bit of pressure out in other words a wee bit of water escapes from a radiator or a pipe or anything like that it immediately drops in the pressure and your boiler switches off straight away then a call out happens and it's about 70 quid to get an engineer out and possibly at the weekend it's maybe about another it's 80 quid or 90 quid or 100 quid to get mm -hmm. somebody out and actually look at that boiler but in actual fact to be a taught the tenant just to oh just fill the loop up perfect so that's yeah. one of them the washing machine for example it, as i said the seal on the on the inside of the drum yeah it, it stinks um so uh, and and often there's a few bits of debris or even a loose sock that's left from the previous tenant stuck in there. A coin or a penny. Yeah. Or... <laughs> dishwasher, they stink sometimes. So yeah. that's a good thing just to run some through your dishwasher or leave the dishwasher open because obviously the if the dishwasher opens and there's air in there, the bacteria dies as a result of it. So therefore you're fine. So But when you've kept it closed all the time, and the bacteria breeds as a result of it, then when you open it, it's like, oh, yeah, boy, it stinks. Yeah. Um, so make sure that's done as well. Give it even a spray. A quick, a, another one as well is just get one of these sprays. You know how you have flash and stuff like that? Spray it in your sinks, spray it in your toilets, spray it everywhere else, and you you wouldn't believe the freshness it actually gives and the impression yeah. it gives because people are conditioned with the smell of flash um, yeah. immediately, the pine smell. Pine, obviously, as soon as you smell pine, you think it's fresh. Yeah. And that's because flash on the television has conditioned you to do that. As soon as you think lavender, vanilla, they're all relaxing, soothing environments. Make you feel good and wavy back and forward. Are you getting sleepy now? <laughs> but when you think yeah. about it, that's what it makes you feel like when you walk in a door and you smell that for the first time. Ovens and hobs, you're exactly right. The wee things like the hob maybe doesn't work. The sparkers no right, quite right. You've got yeah. the crustacean around your hob. And it just like, oh, geez, from the previous tenant, it just, you couldn't get it off. So it's like, oh, didn't want to do anything yeah. about it. But how much is your property worth and how much is the rent that you're charging for that property? Should you actually just change the thing for all it is? Because it does benefit you in the long run. Doorbell entry system, classic, isn't it? Yeah. That is, every single time you usually get there's something wrong with it at some point in time. And the hassle factor of making sure, well, it is factor, isn't it? Make sure well, if, if, if it's in an apartment player, block, then yeah. Or the hassle of getting everybody else to contribute towards it when it might just be a minor improvement, for God's sake, just pay for it yourself and then, yeah. then work out later on rather than fighting with everybody else trying to get 10 pence out of them, you know, to contribute towards the price. It, um, it mean, just doesn't make sense commercially. Um, locks and keys, make sure you've got keys, all the yeah. right ones, the things like that. Um, electrical sockets, make sure there's no crack sockets. That's classic for there. Light switches, again, crack light switches. Um, and light switches with the rocker switch just isn't working that perfectly right. It's going to happen. There's going to happen, something happen, and then you'll have a call out as a result of it. When you could just take that off for two ninety nine, put another one on, because yeah. it's just a normal um, switch back and forward, a rocker switch. Um, you said about radiators and heaters. Um, classic is you've got a tiny, tiny wee bit in the and and you know a drip or something like that. It's possibly you've tried to seal it up or you've tightened it a bit more, and it's just no happening. Um, Another one for me is often you've got the um, solenoids jammed on the thermostats and the radiators. Yeah. That's a big thing that happens all the time, isn't it? So just make sure they're all working properly. Showers and taps, it's the lime scale, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. Sometimes water it's, pressure on uh, things in showers is as as uh, it's a Legionella thing as well, though. You know, because Legionella, you're supposed to be cleaning for lime scale and stuff like that. Not that anybody's died in a rental property of Legionella. Um, but for some awesome. reason, we got we got dragged in the legislation under the Care Homes Act, and now yeah. we've got to do Legionella tests and uh, uh, you know and risk assessment as a result. Gutters and downpipes, um, well, it's classic, isn't it? It's, it's overflowing gutters. It's all the vegetation from the roof yeah. space. Uh, you'd be amazed how many people have got trees or bushes growing from their chimney breast. You know, it's that that that's a recipe for disaster as it eats into there, and then they wonder why they're getting constant water uh, contamination into yeah. the property and damp from the top corner um and it's because that's what's happened and even and though the, even though the vegetation's been cut back now the roots are still there and caused the damage and you can't yeah you and can't, it's, it's left unattended 
um, that could be costly repairs if you just leave it. So when you think about it, in isolation, these individual points that I've just pointed out there is nothing. But if you compound that over one property, that's a huge amount of things to go wrong, isn't it? Yeah. And then yeah, and I think there's some of them in there that if, uh, if obviously a tenant's coming up against them constantly and they're not being rectified or that the one they rectified in the first place, uh, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll leave. They'll leave the property because the continual niggling of all these, uh, a few of these small things um, can be really obviously um, off-putting for a tenant to think, I don't know why I live here anymore. I they, they, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing when in certain situations where difficult times we don't all think the same so you've got to understand that in difficult times where tenants of um where maybe somebody's got a challenge mentally or something like that you'd be amazed mm -hmm. at how much they focus on what's wrong with your house yeah. um and just all the wee niggly things um they're maybe in a dark space just now they've never phoned you up to, re to, to report them so by the time you turn up um possibly they've got a list as long as your arm was a thing that was wrong and yeah. then you say to yourself, why did you not just report them as you go? Uh, oh, well, I just kind of thought you were coming round and I thought I would wait. And and, and the next minute, you're, you're, you've got a property that's got quite a lot of things to get done to. So we, um, we spoke prevention about one is better like that than recently, cure, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about one like that just recently. Um, and really good tenant, been there a long time. And um, it was the first time I'd been there for a while. I obviously locked down and inspections and things. And I went to see her and... Uh, the garden was just unreal and i'm like why did you not phone us and oh well it's an awful big job and i didn't have enough money to do all that and i'm like but well, we would have worked with you maybe got it done and the, uh, the landlord and yourself went half hours to because now we're faced with a big job to get a garden back to yeah, yeah. um so and you know what it's like what when it's it comes like. to the swing in the summer the gardens just blossom up in the next two weeks yeah. And then the next, you know, it's it's, and, and then you get calls from the neighbours and everybody else, yeah. and then people start to contact you direct. As a, even though you've got a letting agent, then what happens is they start to contact you direct because they know you and the property, they know you, yeah. um, and then they're starting to bother you about it. So, so I think it's key to get the right letting agent in order to make sure that's uh, that's prevention better than cure, isn't it? Yeah. So this means is it really time for upgrades? You want to cover this? Yeah, of course. I mean, the lens market has become a lot more uh, sophisticated in recent years and renting a home is now a long term lifestyle choice. And we've yeah. seen that so much more with people. People choose to rent as part of their lifestyle. Um, there was a time when tenant demands was far less than buyers, but we've seen that change a lot, obviously, a lot over the recent years. Um, and the good news is that people are willing to pay higher rents for better homes uh, and treat um, every departure of a tenant as an opportunity to make an upgrade. Okay, so I think if you've got a tenant leaving, think right, this is an opportunity to get the property maybe to a higher spec or level um, because obviously the property is vacant. So use that opportunity. Um, it is a good uh, opportunity when you think about it, Richard, but I, yeah. I also look at it and, and when the tenant's in situ as well as, as the upgrade goes on. Oh, yeah, there. definitely. Because but... um, a lot of them actually think to themselves, um, you know, oh, this is fantastic. You know, the landlord's actually putting a bit of oh, investment yeah. into this. And then they as well think to themselves that, you know, maybe I should do something as well. So they mm. actually begin to do other things like decorate the house and do the garden mm. and uh, improve as well. So it actually sends a really good message out to the existing person that's in there. And plus the fact that when you come down to the yearly review um, of a slight increase in the rent, and they go, oh, that's no problem. Yeah, that's fine. It's like, you know, now, for anybody out there, I'm not talking about, like, we're putting the rent up by 50 quid a month. No, a very marginal about, amount. Aye, maybe a fiver or something like that um, in order, because in order, that's the, it's the cost of capital, it's the cost of increases, it's the cost of inflation, yeah. stuff like that. Um, so it has to happen as a result of it. But, but it, is, it is good news, isn't it? Yeah, and I think and it's, it's so great to hear tenants when they refer to obviously the agent or the landlord like, oh, it's brilliant, I don't have to worry about anything, I just, you, you, you always do whatever needs done, and if something yeah. needs uh, fixed, it's just I pick up the phone, or uh, or even sometimes we pick up on things in inspections and have them uh, upgraded or rectified without even the tenant asking for it, uh, yeah. and that's the way it should be, and that's how you build up good tenant, um, agent and landlord relationships. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of things to look at, I think, but if you've, I mean, you want your occupancy rate to be as high as it can, but there's always going to be that period where, where you've got a changeover and use that use that opportunity in between tenancies if you do need to do things uh, and upgrade the property. Um, and but, 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 at the same time, eh? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that, and keep advertising. And one of the things I would say, if you're doing a changeover and you're doing it yourself and you're, you know, you're letting yourself, um, I, I know you, 
I've been there before, so you shouldn't be letting it yourself because the cost of the cost of your time is more important than actually trying to save less than the price of a cup of coffee every single day. However, mm-hmm. if you insist that you want to let it yourself because you want to be busy, um, mm-hmm. then what you can do is you just do a video on social media and say, "Look, this is what I'm doing just now. This mm-hmm. property is up for rent. I'm going to be changing the kitchen. So if anybody's out there and they're looking for another property like this, then you know, get in touch with me direct today, uh, and and then we can see if we can sort something out. So you're actually getting the traction and possibly the the kudos of you know that guy's actually investing in his properties and um, people more likely want to stay with you i mean my reputation was sterling and the fact that everybody just used to refer all the tenants to me all their friends yeah. and they used to come to me every single time and they just used to say look jim will get you jim will get you jim will get you mm-hmm. and i was sitting at some like 99.9 percent occupancy rate all the time because I was just getting referrals every single time. I very rarely needed to advertise at all because I had a, I had that fantastic reputation that I was just prepared to invest all the time, and I still do. Yeah, and as a good point that you make, Jim, if you've got a property and you're upgrading, put it out there, let people see that, and also if you've got an agent or if you're doing it yourself, do viewings while all these upgrades are getting done, and you can say to the people when they're viewing, right, this is getting done, so people could actually see, all oh, right, okay, this is getting done, this is going to be nice. Um, right. I've not quite it, finished the painting in the kitchen. Yeah. What colour would you like? Yeah. Oh, what an egg. It's like I can get the choice of a colour. Wow. And and that's the difficult, you know, if you take this and put a deposit down and all the rest of it, I could think about a, we could we could talk about the colour you'd like before before we actually finish it. So they're all but you you're getting people to buy into it. You're getting your tenant to buy into it and be be invested in it because of that, because you're doing it to what they want. Um and it's like it's like that new build thing, isn't it? It's like yeah. you can pick your tiles, you can pick your yeah. kitchen colour, you can pick your units, you can pick this. Um, and and you're doing there, is, you there is a good carpets. choice there. Yeah. yeah, we've done that before with, with tenants and things. If we're putting carpets down, would you like would you like a, a beige colour? Would you like a grey colour? So people get to do that and, and it makes yeah. them feel um, a lot differently about the property. But th- there is a lot of other aspects as well. I mean, I think if um, you're providing white goods and things as well to make sure that the appliances are up to... Up to uh, up to scratch. I mean, some cheap appliances like cheap wet wash machines and things, they, need t- they don't stand the test of time. Um, yeah, and yeah. Wash machines are a really big bugbearer um, that break down and cause issues. And so I think in the first instance, if you're going to be putting white goods and things in place, make sure you're putting, it doesn't have to be overly expensive, top of the range, but at least a, a good, decent mid range uh, appliance, whether that be a wash machine, if it's uh, a dishwasher or things that you have here supplying them. I think. Uh, the mid-range, like I think you've got brands like Neff and AG, AG and Bosch and Siemens and things like that. These are all obviously good make um, appliances, which you can pick up relatively at an average cost without having to obviously overspend. Well, um, cheapest, cheapest is not always best, isn't it? So could you imagine best. if could you imagine if somebody else other than Leonardo da Vinci, uh, da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> There you uh, go. Hey. <laughs> and the thing is, that if you're going to put in things that are cheaper, that aren't going to last very long, then you're going to have to continually replace them. You're going to upset the tenant. You're going to, do you know what I mean? Put your tenants in, the tenants in jeopardy and then ultimately cost yourself money in the long run. Um, and there's also things like, obviously, we're back to showers and things like that. I mean, occasionally mm-hmm. we still see these these old mixer taps that have got the shower attached and things. and you've no that you've no thermostatic control of the temperature there that could be a really a bugbearer for tenants and off putting and for the cost of putting in a proper thermostatic shower that obviously i mean people use showers daily every day people are up want to just jump in the shower and go to work and if you have to fiddle a bit with a mixer tap or something why should i put in a thermostatic shower that's about 300 pounds not necessarily but i mean i think it's all about making your tenant comfortable in the property making it making it easier for them to live their life and if, if they're happy and live i'll tell you devil's advocate on the other side though why should i pay my rent if the landlord doesn't give a shite about this property yeah. and that's what you that's what you'll come up against um and they're, they're all things that can be avoidable i think really by like you say and like we'll just reinforce it with how we started off take a step back look at why you're doing this and what you need to do yeah uh, and i definitely think um I definitely think that's the way to approach it. And I think with uh, with rising fuel bills and everything being a massive conversation right now, um, tenants are running about, uh, running, um, talking about costs and things of um, utilities now at the moment and looking for gaps in your buy to let energy efficiency as well, which is a big thing as well, then um, you could look at opportunities to obviously make the property more energy efficient, bring utility costs down 
And if a tenant's in a property and thinks, God, this is, it's, it's not so expensive to run this property, then they're going to stay where they are. You um, might have to, as, a, as, as landlords and property investors out there, the first thing you should be doing at this point in time is looking at your existing boilers and think to yourself, yeah, is exactly. it something I should be planning to replace? I'll guarantee you at some point in time, your tenant will come to you and say, your boiler isn't as efficient as it is because yeah. they don't know about that because what happens is somebody knocks on their door and says, I can give you a free boiler or I can give you, I can get your landlord to, a, a discounted boiler. And it's, so it's not you that's driving that. It's not the tenant that's driving that. It's the external factors that influence them to say that. And then it gets into their head and then they get annoyed, upset, whatever it is. And then that causes an imbalance in the tenancy relationship. Um, and as a result, it could end up, um, it could end up with a void. So yeah. you end up getting someone moving out because of the boiler and the boiler is maybe 2000 to replace because it's maybe a like for like because it's just a, an old, maybe a, a, a combi boiler, but it's not a condenser. Mm -hmm. So it's running at 20% less efficiency. Um, so the boiler gets changed over and it doesn't get changed over. Your tenant moves out. You've lost two or three months rent. You try to rent it, but everybody looks at the energy costs and think the boiler's no up to speed. So why should I be renting that? Then you lose more rent every month. And therefore, you've actually lost your tenant, but you're five months down the road and you've lost £2,000. Yeah. Job's done. I mean, you may as well have kept your tenant in the first place and actually kept it. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense to do that. And I think energy efficiency and things is, for a long time was kind of overlooked by a lot of people, landlords and things. But it's becoming more apparent now. We've got the impending, obviously, EPC uh, minimal banding coming in. But yeah. you'd be surprised how many tenants that we have applying for properties. Uh, and obviously, by law, we have, we're, we're obligated to put it on the listing anyway. But mm -hmm. they, like, what's the energy rating on this? What, what is this an A, a B, or a C? And they want to see the EPC. Um, so, yeah, to make your property more energy efficient um, will ultimately then obviously have a positive impact on your utility bills, thus yeah. keeping yeah. your tenant happy. Um, and then finally, I think, obviously, the, the one that I picked up as my bugbearer is uh, unsalvageable carpets. If it's been a long tenancy and the carpet's done um, and it can't be cleaned, lift it. Uh, I think it's, I mean, I, I think one that we come up against um, people in kitchens when they're pulling out washing machines and things, if they've got yeah, their own appliances, yeah. written the lino and things just look so unsightly. Um, and I've seen people like, oh, just stick it down. And blah, blah. It's like, put a, bit, a, new bit, a, new a new bit of vinyl down in the kitchen. I'll make it look a hundred times better. Um, and because the door bars only, door bars go as far as maybe five centimetres, they didn't go 20. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Right. So I've seen a lot of obviously things over the years. Whereas I, I would just recommend lifting it and putting a new bit down um, if they're unsalvageable. And the tenancy, if it's run for several years and things, then I mean sometimes it doesn't always come under wear and tear. But um, cleaning, uh, cleaning things doesn't always cut. It, so yeah, because often, often somebody you know people that have pets actually the cats actually scratch at the corners, and then yeah. you know I've had I've put brand new carpets in a year later, then the tenant said, "Oh, I'm moving out," and then the next minute it's like, "Well, uh, well, that wasn't there when you had it. You had a brand new carpet." Oh, well, my car, and it's like there's almost like a dispensation, like it's the cat's fault. Well, yeah. <laughs> maybe you should have opened the door and let the car out. Or but I'm that not going to be paying for that. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be paying for the car actually scratching that to death. It's like, you know, it's up to, it's up to you to make sure you accommodate for that. So that's yeah. when the tenant would be liable for it. However, five years down the road, maybe a different story. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously you compensate if it's been a longer term tenancy. But I think anybody who's got a property and, and maybe unsure about what they need to do and things, then feel free to message me on here, message me direct. Um, I'd have to come round and have a walk round and like you say, it's, it's to get a fresh set of eyes on a property that maybe you've become accustomed to and say, right, oh, maybe do this, do this, you need to do this and uh, I'm happy yeah. to provide that for anybody. So once we've got your target and clear in terms of your target market, once we've got, any, is anything looking tired? Does everything work um, in the property as well? And we've looked at things, potential upgrades and how we'd maximise on that. Is your marketing magic? That's really what it yeah. comes down to. Once your buy to let is looking all ship and shape and pristine, it's 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 a shame that all that hard work goes to waste if it's poor quality in terms of the promotion of the property. Um, but now the key here is when you're choosing a letting agent to run. I would assume that everybody watching is going to be using a letting agent. Um, and and if you've not understood the benefits of using a letting agent, um, then then you need to watch one of our previous shows about yeah. letting agents and about should you manage or should you do a letting agent. And the reason for that is because 
it literally is less than the price of a cup of coffee every, coffee every single day in order to do that. I think James had actually said one time to us, he had worked out as £1.80 a day for managing his property. And I'm thinking for £1.80, now you know, is that issue still going on for me at Mill Street? <laughs> um, um, as in the background, How many hours is that so far that you've been dealing with that? Um, well, it's quite a few now. It was, so it's uh, about 10 hours probably, back and forward. It and, was getting dealt with in the middle of the week. Aye, as well. and there you go. Now, I know what 10 hours of my time's worth, and it's almost the full rental for the year um, in terms of the actual rent itself, not the management fee. Mm-hmm. So, so it's a huge bonus to me having it, having a property managed by someone else and taking all that hassle off of me. When the guy phoned me at seven o'clock at night, it was easy for me to say, "I'll just send you the number of the managing agent." Yeah, you'll deal with. Because I mean, that was you guys that dealt was with. That, was that two, three weeks ago, Jim? And, and yeah. obviously, we're down to deal with insurers and everything now. So, so to ensure you're getting the best result, it's essential for the market and your property to, to include these things. Okay, up to date photographs that reflect the tenants will see today. Don't put a photograph that you took on in 2009. It's still got the no. date in the bottom corner, which is what a lot of ladies have on their website, isn't it? I've seen the some amazing pictures corner online, 2009. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, this is 2022. How is that still on there? So make sure they can see what they see today and they walk in the door and they can actually see that, rather than the ones your land agent took these few years ago, as I said. Multiple images that show off the best angles of the rooms and highlight the close-up details and features as well. Um, if you're going into a room to take a photograph, take it from the door so it, it faces to the window, so you get the whole thing and you get the bright light coming in as well. Don't take a picture of the sofa um, because, yeah. you know, unless the sofa is a wow factor, and you're, you're renting a furnished property, there's no point in taking a picture of the sofa. If it's the previous tenants, it's like, it's gone. So you've yeah. given the impression that you've got a sofa there as well, which isn't the case. Um, don't pay, don't just take a picture of a bare wall as well, because that doesn't do anything. It has to have something featuristic about the property. Um, be enth- enthusiastic and evocative descriptions as well. Also sell the finer points to your property, along with the highlights and the high points of the neighbourhood that will attract your target audience. So talk about what's there. What is in it close proximity to? Is it close proximity to a train station, to a beach, to a golf course, to a harbour, to a five coastal schools, park? Shops, you know, yeah. to the shops, to the amenities, to the schools, the primary schools, the nurseries, all these different things. Anything yeah. else, Richard? Yeah, parks, nature trails, obviously, like you say, beaches and things. Things that obviously, and, and, and think about who the target audience is as well. I mean, if it's a three yeah. bedroom house, you're thinking, right, family, so schools, shops. The park, do you know, what I mean? things that are going to be relevant to them and resonate with them, and think, yeah. oh, this is in a good area for me. Now, for anyone out there, if you want, you can mention things like in the comments if you want. So feel free to do that. What you would expect, um, if you were looking for a property, what would you expect on your doorstep? Where would you hope to have, or the property you're in just now? Why did you buy that property? Why did you move into that property? Why did you rent that property? Um, so you know, it'd be interesting to hear your comments about why that was the case because again this is sharing information because the some of the things that we've mentioned here we've maybe not mentioned what you're thinking about as well so it's a good thing to share that information to to know what it is um now other thing as well you need to make sure your property is actually included on major portals yep. social media instagram it's not just you know just putting on social media is not going to make any you know it's like fair enough hey everybody share my property but you'll get every man their dog and possibly overwhelm yourself with comments and um and and for people that actually are not applicable to what you're looking for and and it's great to get shared among everybody and everybody to look at and see how wonderful it is but the reality is you need a tenant in the door yeah you need the right tenant in the door and the right tenants looking for the right properties go to the right places they go to letting agents yeah, you don't and go I think as well, you to be, don't go to Gumtree to be honest. Um, they'll maybe go to Face Bay. Uh, they'll possibly they will go to the letting agents because they know they're nothing to bother about. And uh, you tend to find the problematic tenants stay away from letting agents because they know and they'll find out about their history and Bay, or yeah. they're blacklisted or they've got rent arrears or they've got a decree against them. And when they do the reference and the credit reports and stuff like that, um, and they know maybe from the past about them as well, so they tend not to go for them. Um, so, Right Move Prime Location Zupa, Esmond Homes, our website. We got a huge amount of traction on our website yeah. for properties. Um, our social media channels as well. We got a huge yeah. amount of traction onto that. Um, but we built up these audiences over time as a result of it. So, um, an active social media presence where the agent shows a knowledge of using the platform to promote their listings is a really great point to that. Um, you know, 
Heather's actually said, classic example, gardening, parking yep. spaces, local shops, doctors, dentists. Yep, thanks very much for that, Heather. That'd be great. Post of us, never thought about that either, really. Yeah. Um, Some of the main things that people look for in is, is storage and parking are, are yeah. really big ones. Storage is a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. So um, emphasize the storage in your property because a lot of new builds lack storage. That's yeah. a, so you've got things like external storage. Where's your mountain bike going to go? Is it going to be a secure place where you know you, you make sure that they're all protected? Is it going to have a lock on the door? Uh, do you have an integrated garage? Uh, can you actually get your car in there? Although most people don't put their cars in the garage. They usually put all their junk. Um, that, or uh, maybe that's just me. <laughs> I think the majority of people do just use it for storage now, but... Probably finally as well is the pricing strategy. Yeah. And it's designed to get the best in the possible rent without losing inquiries and overvaluing or or a, a guesswork piecemeal approach to it. Um, what I mean by it is um, is like price it. Find out, you can, you can look on various websites to find out what the historical rental values of property is. You can look at the rent assessor's amounts as well to see what he gauges yeah. for the, the broad market rent from the area in terms of that. Um, but you could also look at other um, buy to let landlords on different platforms and investors as well and see what they're looking at as well. And then pitch it to the market you want. Sometimes a wee bit less rent will get you a better tenant who will stay yeah. longer, which in the long run will actually benefit you more because you don't need to do as much work for it and you don't need to do as have much hassle with it. It's, it's the hassle factor. You yeah. know, the one thing you'll never get back, and it's the most important thing I could say to everyone, is time. Once someone takes time off you, you're not getting it back. Mm -hmm. So if you can save that time with a little money and it makes it more efficient for you and less stressful for you, why would you not do that? Time, you'll never get back. Nobody's ever sat on their deathbed and thought, I wish I had more money. Every single time they've always said, I wish I have more time every single time and yet we fail to realize it's time is the most important commodity we've ever got in our life once it's gone it's gone you're not coming back make the most of it make the best of it and use these for your, all these techniques richard i'll leave you to round up on this what's your thoughts yeah. on this? i think what i would round up on this today is obviously have a methodical approach to your buy to let and think about, like I say, see a, take a step back, think about what you need to do, speak to the right people. Um, I think that um, you need to have the knowledge to do it properly as well. And if you feel yeah. like you don't, speak to the people that do. And I, I'm happy to speak to anyone that's obviously listening on, on the Now Live or reruns. Um, I'm happy to come out and have a chat with you, have a look at your property, give you pointers. I feel free to speak to me any time. Um, I've spent a lot of time obviously developing my own knowledge and I'm happy to pass that on to people. Perfect. I mean, for me, it's really conducting regular reviews of your buy to let for its presentation, yep. placing the marketplace, keeping your investments looking great and high demand for your ideal tenants. That's really what it's all about. It's yep. all about occupancy rate, it's all about location, oh, yeah. it's all about it's all about margin, it's all about looking after the tenant, it's all about you know, all these different factors. It's not one big thing will make a fundamental difference to you out there. All these things marry up to an extent. The compounding future. effect of getting all these wee things right will make a huge difference to the end result of yeah. what, where you are in terms of your portfolio. That's really what it, it, needs to, it needs to be. Yeah, definitely. I would agree. Yeah. Okay, and that's us. Thanks very much, guys, for watching. Um, if you've got any further comments on this rerun, um, please feel free to do them. Yep. We will pick them up, definitely. We will respond to you. We will engage with you. If you can message us direct as well if you want to do it in private and get information. A lot of people message us direct a lot of the times, and yep. we give them sometimes one-to-ones in terms of what we're doing and give them advice and support in terms of the way forward for them as well. Uh, and until next week, guys, uh, watch out for the Wealth Creation Show. Monday, Monday, Saturday, Monday night, yeah. every single Monday night, I am going to be talking about pensions versus properties because somebody actually challenged me on my numbers. Somebody jumped on the TikTok <laughs> and all had a wee frenzy on TikTok and they were all going, oh, children's pensions and retirement and all the rest of it, and you've no factor in this and you've no factor in that. And when I worked it out about pensions versus property, it was even better. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll I'll bring, one I, so I'm, I'm going to I'll, I'll blow a few minds I think Mind is bring yourself a carrier bag to carry your brains in after the end of the, <laughs> after the, end of the conversation but literally on uh, Monday night 6.30 we're going to talk about pensions versus property and what the fundamental differences are and until that time guys um, I'll see you later, bye bye for now Okay, cheers, bye